Hello everyone, welcome back to Medical Coding Club. This is Chandrika. So in this video, we are going to learn something that forms the foundation of medical coding and the medical coding process overview and the key differences between physician coding and outpatient coding, also inpatient coding. So many new medical coders like often get confused about you know which code set or uh, which kind of uh, billing form or reimbursement system are used in each different settings okay so that exactly what we will clarify today so and also i'm going to uh, go one step ahead and i'll also discuss the recommended certifications for each coding area so you know which career path to choose as you grow in this field okay so let's begin so let's start with physician coding physician coding is also called as professional fee coding or simply we call it as profi coding okay so mainly this type of coding applies to the service provided by physician or other qualified healthcare professionals typically in their own private clinic or office setting okay and next comes to code set so here uh, to report the physician coding we gonna use three main primary code set so for diagnosis reporting we will use icd 10 cm for procedure reporting, we will utilize the CPT codes and for supply and, you know, drug or any other miscellaneous, we will use HCPCS level 2 codes. So, as I said, these are the three primary code set which we will utilize in order to code for physician. So, next comes to claim for these services submitted using CMS 1500 form. Okay, CMS 1500 form. It's a professional claim form and uh, it is a paper format. So next comes to electronic format. Here we will utilize 837P. So again, P stands for professional claim. Utilizing this billing format, the physician get the reimbursement. Okay. And here, uh, you know, mainly since we are reporting for or since we are coding for an individual provider, we will use the standard npi numbers for each individual and accordingly they will get the reimbursement for their payment okay so this particular physician coding reimbursement follows physician fee schedule okay pfs uh, this means providers are paid per service rendered okay under what we call that you know fee for service model so what we have fee for service model f f s okay f f s is nothing but whatever the service that provider is providing on the date of encounter individually they'll get paid for it okay so that is the reimbursement methods that we follow under professional fee coding so just take an example doctor sees a patient in his clinic for chest pain and uh, the diagnosis we got we have reported with icd-10 code chest pain unspecified and uh, we have used cpt code double nine two one four just for example so it's enm office visit okay and then the claim form we are going to use here is cms 1500 billed by physician under individual npi okay npi stands for national provider identification so here we will have the 11 digits or sometimes 10 digits number based on that they're gonna get the uh, payment okay so and then comes to so if you are working if you have already started your career as non-certified medical coder and working for any kind of physician coding primary care clinic or urgent care facility then you have to uh, you know work or uh, if you you know you, if you still planning to continue your career then the certification is recommended uh, you know cpc okay so from aapc certified professional coder you can get it so this cpc credential prepares you for both profi coding as well outpatient coding so cpc stands for certified professional coder okay it purely involves the professional coding only that's why we have cpc so here you can learn everything what you need uh, in order to uh, in order to be a better physician coder okay so this is all about physician coding or profi coding so next 
so now let's move on to outpatient coding okay so here you may get little confusion between profi coding and outpatient coding so let me clarify that so understand here outpatient coding is used for hospital hospital based services okay and where patient does not stay overnight uh, and you know this code include visits like emergency department or any kind of diagnostic imaging lab test or maybe same day surgery okay all of this will happen in the hospital setting but at the outpatient department okay patient is not going to stay in the hospital patient is not going to admit in the hospital overnight okay they are not going to stay more than 24 hours in the hospital uh, within that patient will get the service and they are back to their home so these services are considered as outpatient coding so again comes to uh, the code set so there is no differences here between profi and uh, outpatient coding the same code set you are going to use so for diagnosis you will use the icd10 cm codes and for procedures you will use the cpt and the other supply or other miscellaneous services which are not not there in the cpt we will take the hcpcs code set okay so again these are the three primary sets we will use under outpatient coding so next comes to the reimbursement okay okay before that you can check the billing form here so billing form we will use ub04 form so ub stands for uni sorry uniform billing okay uniform billing and uh, also cms 1450 electronic format will be uh, 837 i i stands for institutional claim okay p stands for professional claim that we used under profi coding here i i stands for institutional claim but coming to the reimbursement methodology so under reimbursement uh, this system follows outpatient prospective payment system okay so op ps this particular reimbursement methods they are going to follow and that hospitals are paid based on apcs okay apcs that stands for ambulatory payment classifications okay accordingly according to outpatient prospective payment system uh, the outpatient physician will be getting paid for the service whatever they have rendered okay as i said here uh, the patient is just seeing at hospital setting in the hospital they know the opd department outpatient department so patient is not going to uh, stay overnight here now that means the patient is not going to cross more than 24 hours of stay in the hospital so they are going to take particular uh, you know as i mentioned diagnostic or maybe same day surgeries and within the same day patient will be back to their home okay so this is considered as outpatient coding so as i said for both uh, profi coding and outpatient coding we have the cpc certification or if you are solely i mean you you are continuing with outpatient coding means you can also plan for coc certification certified outpatient coder okay both are from aapc and here you can uh, get to learn in depth regarding outpatient coding okay like for minor surgeries we have the integumentary to nervous system the surgery section what we have we can see many of the procedure uh, from the surgery section you going to see it okay so yes this is about outpatient coding so next so lastly we have inpatient coding so inpatient coding is also called as facility coding so mainly this applies when patient is formally admitted to the hospital and stay at least one night or longer for treatment purpose or maybe surgery or maybe for observation purpose okay so if patient is crossing more than 24 hours then we must consider it as an inpatient service and we have to follow the ip coding guidelines so next comes to uh, here in the ip setting coders are using two major code set the first one is for diagnosis we still use the icd10 cm code set only and for procedure codes here we use icd10 pcs codes okay procedure coding system so unlike outpatient or physician coding we don't use cpt codes for ip setting service 
okay for ip services we don't use cpt instead of cpt we use icd10 pcs to report the procedures uh, we know which was uh, uh, like the treatment which was given in the ip setting so next comes to hospital submit claims on the ub04 form okay so then the payment is based on ipps stands for inpatient prospective payment system based on ms drgs okay drg you might have heard drg drg refers to diagnosis related group and ms refers to medicare severity diagnosis related group okay and one more thing here is uh, the reimbursement is not based on each individual service okay in the profi coding it was purely about individual service okay pay for the service but coming to ip setting here it is fixed for fixed payment for per case okay the whole facility will get paid per case not the individual provider okay there will be a group npi based on that the whole facility will get paid okay so that's why we follow ipps reimbursement method so next if you you know if you are a coder working in ip setting so if you will you know that you will be handling uh, the principal and the secondary diagnosis comorbidities okay and procedure all of which can affect the drg assignment and reimbursement so we have to learn in depth and then only we have to start coding ip coding so to build career in this particular ip domain the recommended certification we have is ccs certified coding specialist offered by ahima okay and also from aapc also we have cic certification that also you can learn to be an inpatient facility coder okay so this is the overview of physician coding outpatient coding and inpatient coding so you got to learn uh, what kind of code set we use in each setting and what are the reimbursement methodology we use okay and you got to see some ideas i think so let's now see once again i'll just brief the certification detail so if you are starting your career you are a new to medical coding and you are just starting your career then you must choose to go with cpc certification okay so cpc certification is like you know it has a more value and more employers are asking for cpc certification so that you can plan the cpc as an initial entry level certification because you will have two options here one is profi coding as well outpatient coding because the code set what we use in the physician coding and outpatient coding are same and for cpc certification you have to learn icd 10 cm for diagnosis and cpt for procedure and hcpcs the these three code set you have to learn for cpc certification so it will be easy for you to get into profi coding as well outpatient coding okay and for ip also C cpc is considered because you already learned icd 10 while studying the cpc uh, you know certification okay so that is one more flexibility you will get when you opt for cpc certification okay the other way is you already started uh, doing the uh, medical coding process maybe you have one year of experience or two years of experience now you would like to shift uh, or switch your career from outpatient to ip setting then you can plan ccs certification okay certified coding specialist offered by ahima so this certification you can plan but if you feel like i already have aapc membership and i would like to go with aapc alone then after cpc you can plan cic certification okay it purely depends on individual check how your career is and if, if the employer is ready to sponsor for your certification you can get more certification if your uh, employer is you know happy with the single certification then no need to get certified you can just keep learning just understand the process and take a relevant training that is enough okay so yes this is all about the certification and the differences between physician coding outpatient coding and inpatient coding 
so you can now confidently answer the code set billing or reimbursement system and certification uh, like uh, i feel that you got an idea and yes that's all for today thank you all for watching and learning with me today i hope this video helped you to clearly understand how medical coding works with different areas okay so please do subscribe to my channel and please to share it with your medical coding friends also if you are planning to uh, take cpc training or if you are already certified but you lack knowledge in icd or cpt then definitely you can plan for my one month live classes or two month live classes based on that you can enhance your knowledge okay so to join my courses please do text me on whatsapp with a detailed uh, info about your requirement okay based on that i'll get back to you yes thank you all thank you for watching